1.6 is solving linear equality, inequalities, excuse me, and that's just when you have an inequality symbol, whether it's less than, greater than, strictly less than, strictly greater than, or whatever it may be. Um, for example, we might have 3x minus 5 is less than 6 minus 2x. Um, to solve it, what's a little bit different is we're going to solve for the variable x, but for an equation, since it has to equal the right side, it's always just one answer or two answers, depending on, you know, if you have a linear or a quadratic. But here, when we solve inequalities, there's lots of numbers that we can plug in for x to make the left side less than the right side. So when we find our answer, guys, they're going to be um, intervals, like negative infinity to 4 or or forward infinity, whatever that may be, okay? So we'll have a solution set versus just a single or a couple solutions. All right, so to solve, guys, right here in the middle is kind of the main thing to pay attention to. To solve a linear inequality, do exactly what you would do with an equation, except dot, dot, dot. When you both sides of an inequality are multiplied or divided by a negative number, we must reverse the sign of the inequality symbol, okay? So if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative, reverse the sign, okay? If you're multiplying or dividing by a negative, we're just gonna reverse the sign. And sometimes you can do it completely by avoiding that, and I'll show you what I'm gonna talk about. So on example one, I'm gonna solve it two ways. I'll show you how there's one way you can just ignore that because of how we do it, we have a bunch of positives. Or if you happen to not do that way and you are stuck with dividing by a negative, what you have to do, okay? So we'll do two ways of solving this. So um, I'm going to write option one. We have 3x minus 5 is less than 6 minus 2x. So one way to do it is whenever you move your x's over to combine, subtract the smaller over to the left. Okay, or subtract the smaller to the bigger, I should say. It's not always to the left, okay? So we have 3x on one side, 2x on the other. I'm going to move him over, okay? So when I move him over, it's adding 2x, right? So I'll have 3 plus 2 or 5x. I haven't touched the minus 5, so he's still there. Less than 6, and the 2x is canceled out, right? That's why I did it. And then what we'll do next, guys, is we'll just add 5 over. Just like an equation. So we'll have 5x is less than 11. And then here's the part, this fi final part where you have to divide or multiply. You just ask yourself, are you dividing or multiplying by a negative? No. So leave the sign as is. So we're just going to divide both sides by 5. So x is less than 11 fifths. So that's a little over 2. I think that's 2.2, guys. So as long as our x values are less than 2.2, that will make the left side greater or less than the right side. And you can play around with it. You're like, oh, I'll pick 1 or put 0 in, right? If you plug 0, negative 5 is less than 6, right? Or if you plug in 1, you'll do it. But if you pick a number greater than 11.5, you'll see that that inequality is not true. All right, so if you do option 1, you don't even have to remember the trick of reversing the sign because we never had to divide or multiply by a negative. We kept it all positive. Say, though, we did do it, okay? And I just want to show you how it all works out the same. Option two, we have 3x minus 5 is less than 6 minus 2x. And you just so happen to move the 3x over to the right this time, okay? So we just so happen to move the 3x over. So since he's positive, if we're going to move him over, what would we have to do? subtract them. So they're going to cancel out. You're left with negative 5 is less than 6 minus 5x. Is that okay? We want to get this x by itself. So we need to move that 6 over. Since he's positive, we're going to subtract him. Negative 5 minus negative 6 is a negative 11 is less than negative 5x. And here it is, folks, our final little thing. We're going to divide by negative 5, but this thing up here said if you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to reverse which way the sign goes, meaning our inequality symbol will change from a less than to a greater than, okay? So we'll just divide both sides by negative 5. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we have 11 fifths. Change the direction of the sign because we divide it by a negative. And we have x. But 11 fifths being greater than, or x, isn't that the same thing as x being less than 11 fifths? Yeah. 
it's the same thing, okay? So notice we get the same answer. They are gonna ask you to, um, I know we don't have a whole lot of room in there, goes. Um, if you have room, because you write smaller than me, they are gonna ask us to answer it not only in inequality, but with a number line and an interval, okay? So sometimes I think the number line's easier than the interval, so let's just do the number line. Here he is. Just put 11 fifths in here. It doesn't matter where he is. And what values do we care about? We care about values of x that are less than 11 fifths, so we're gonna shade to the left. And are we gonna have a parenthesis or a bracket at 11 fifths? Parenthesis. Parenthesis because we're not including it, right? So I think once you do your number line, it's easy to visualize what your interval is gonna be, meaning what's the farthest left we go? The furthest left we go, we're going to where? negative infinity, right? And what's the furthest right we go? 11 fifths. So our intervals, negative infinity to 11 fifths. So all of that, they're going to be looking for an answer. I should have left us a little bit more room. Okay. So notice again, it's not just one single value or two or three values. It's every value less than 11 fifths will make that left side be less than the right side. Okay. So then well, the next thing is we can actually have compound inequalities, meaning you have more than one inequality happening, okay? So you can have the word and, which means you have it shoved in the middle and you have two bounds on the left and right. Or you can have the word or, which means, hey, this or that happened, and they're just two inequalities that you solve separately, okay? So they're just showing you here. Here's an example of and. If negative three is less than two x plus five, and two x plus five is less than or equal to seven, you can combine them to make this compound inequality, all right? Here, uh, a disjunction is with the word or. You can't combine them because the symbols wouldn't be going the right way, so you just leave them as two separate inequalities and just solve them as two separate inequalities. So go ahead and flip it over to the top of the next page. Let's solve these bad boys. So as we solve them, we're going to solve them and find an answer with an inequality, but then we're also going to answer them with a number line and with an interval, okay? So I, it's kind of small, so I like to rewrite it just so I have my bigger handwriting. If you don't mind it being small, you can solve it right off of the inequality that's listed, okay? So the key thing here, guys, is whatever we do to isolate x, like, you know, you subtract 5 or whatever, you do it to all three parts, okay? So you want to get rid of that 5 in the middle, so you want to subtract them, but you want to subtract them here, here, and here, okay? You'll just do it to all three parts. So we'll just do minus 5, minus 5, minus 5, like that. So when you subtract 5 from the left, you get negative 8, bring down the inequality symbol, 2x is still there, but then 5 and negative 5 is canceled out, and less than or equal to a positive 2, because 7 minus 5 is 2. Is that okay? Then your next move is you want to get x by itself. How are you going to do that? You want to divide by 2, but you just make sure you divide here, here, and here by 2, and you'll have your answer. So we have negative 4 is less than x is less than or equal to 1. Is that all right? I'm just looking at my answer key and I don't have the less than or equal to. Okay, so that would be the answer if they want it in inequality, meaning anything between negative four and one, including one, would be a correct answer, okay? But how could we do that on the number line? Graph negative four, graph one, and do you guys agree that X is between the two? So we're gonna shade between the two. But since this is a strict inequality, what are we going to have at 4 or negative 4? A parenthesis or a bracket? Parenthesis. And since 1 is less than or equal to, we're going to have a bracket. And then that just mimics the interval that they're looking for, okay? How, what's the farthest left we go? Negative and 4, and we don't include it, so we have a parenthesis. What's the farthest right we go? 1, but we include it, so we'll have a bracket. So all three of those are ways to show the solution set set of all values of x that make the left, actually in the middle between negative three. And again, if you're like, I don't know if I did it right, pick a number that's in your solution set. Like for example, zero's in our solution set. So that's an easy one to kind of throw up into our inequality and see if it's true. So zero's in between these, meaning zero's an answer that could work. You throw zero in here, two times zero is zero. Zero plus five is five. Isn't five between negative three and seven? Yeah, so you know you've done it correctly. All right, so the last one, guys, example three, is the exact same idea, except for they're 
it's a disjunction, so we're just going to separate them. We're going to just solve them as two separate inequalities. So this is 2x minus 5 is less than or equal to negative 7, and 2x minus 5 is greater than 1. So we're just going to solve them each as two separate inequalities. All right, so I'm going to add 5 over. So I have 2x is less than or equal to negative 2. Does that look like what you guys got? And notice I'm dividing by a positive 2. So some people are like, oh, when your answer is negative is when you flip the sign. No, it's when you divide by a negative. And I'm just dividing by a positive 2, so I don't need to switch my sign. So x is less than or equal to negative 1 is one answer. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to add my 5 over like I did before. So you have 2x is greater than 6. Does that look right? And so then x is greater than 3. So what you want to realize is when we go to graph this on a number line, we're actually going opposite directions, okay? So in this one, this is all values of x that are less than or equal to negative 1. So I'm going to graph negative 1, and I want all values that are less than it, so I'm going to shade to the right. And since it's less than or equal to negative 1, I'm going to use a bracket in that direction. Then your next inequality is all x values that are greater than 3. So just graph 3 somewhere over here. I'm not picky, okay? And then greater than 3 is going off to the right. So I'm going to shade all that. And since it's a strict inequality, I'm going to use a parenthesis, right? So when it comes to answering this as an interval, it's that, remember the whole idea of this interval plus this interval? So we have that union in between. So on here, how far does he go to the left? He goes to negative infinity, right? And he goes up to and stops at negative 1. Then we're going to walk over all those values that don't work, and we're going to start again at 3 and go to positive infinity. Okay? So there, and I'll write or, because that's kind of how you answer it in inequality. So it's x is less than or equal to negative 1, or x is greater than 3. Here's the, the graph of it, and here are all those intervals that will work. And again, um, oopsie, I didn't write negative 1 there, did I? Negative 1 turned into my bracket. So I don't really have an easy one. Maybe I'll pick 4. I put 4 in here. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 5. That's 3. That's greater than 1. That's perfect. So that solves that one, you know. And then just pick something over here, like negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. That's less than negative 7. So you can just, you have to pick one from each, though, to make sure you satisfy each. All right, so we kind of already talked about these domains um, a little bit, because but we really just focus on the odds, and I mentioned briefly the evens. But remember, whenever you take a square root, you don't want to take a square root of a negative. You can take a square root of 0, because the square root of 0 is just 0. So whatever's on the inside of the square root, we just want to make sure it's greater than or equal to 0. So we're just going to say, okay, the domain is going to be x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. So whatever we're taking the square root of, it could be 0, otherwise it needs to be positive. And then you just solve it like normal. Add your 6 over, so x has to be greater than or equal to 6. How can we write this as a domain? Remember, there's two ways to do domains. x such that x is greater than 6, like that. That's called set notation. Or... I like, I prefer the interval. I don't know if anybody else does. This is x such that x is greater than or equal to 6, meaning 6 is the lowest you're going to go, and then you want anything greater than that. And we can include 6, so if 6 will have a bracket, and we'll go off to positive infinity. So you're like, well, why did you give me b? What's the difference? Well, we kind of have two things going on. So remember, we only can take a square root of a positive number, but we can take square roots of 0, so that's okay. But... Do we want zero in the denominator here? No. So we're just going to do what we did here, but we're going to make it a strict inequality and not use equal to zero. Because typically you can take square roots of zero, but you don't want this denominator to be zero, right? So we don't want this to be zero. Can't be zero. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we just did. Pull the inside out, 3 minus x, but just make sure it's strictly greater than zero. Okay. There, I think the easy way I would go is just add the x over to the other side. Is that okay, guys? Like, just to get rid of that negative. If you wanted to subtract the 3 over, you could. 
but then ultimately you'd have to divide by a negative one and reverse which direction the sign is going, right? And you can do that, but I would just add the x over. So three is greater than x or x is less than three. Is that okay? Is that what you guys get? So what is that? It's x such that x is less than three or we want all values of x that are less than three. So that means we're gonna go down low forever. So what's our lower cutoff? Negative infinity. And where are we gonna stop? At three, but we're not gonna include them. So we're gonna use a parenthesis. 